Today, we're pleased to welcome not just one, but four Medal of Honor recipients. Captain Paul Buca, Lieutenant Michael Thornton, Lieutenant Thomas Norris, and Master Chief Britt Slabinski. Captain Buca was awarded the Medal of Honor for his gallant and intrepid service in the Army during the Vietnam War. Lieutenant Thornton also served in the Vietnam War and was awarded the Medal of Honor for his courage and perseverance within the U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Norris was awarded the Medal of Honor for his selfless dedication and service in the U.S. Navy also during the Vietnam War. And finally, Navy SEAL Master Chief Slobinski was awarded the Medal of Honor for his bold initiative and leadership in the war on terrorism in Afghanistan. Also joining us this morning is someone you all know well, Sean Marburger, history teacher at the New Orleans Military and Maritime Academy, who will be moderating questions from students in our live audience here. And for those in our virtual audience, please note that this is a Zoom webinar. This means we cannot see or hear you, but if you have any questions for our Medal of Honor recipients, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A box and we'll do our best to address these. We're so grateful to the Congressional Medal of Honor Society and the National World War II Museum with support by museum trustee, Mr. Kevin Clifford to make today's program possible. Please help me welcome Captain Buca, Lieutenant Thornton, Lieutenant Norris and Master Chief Slavinsky. Well, good morning, everyone. Wow, I like that. Hey, I just wanted to take a quick moment before we get started just to uh, say, hey, it's great to be in your presence. See all the uniforms. Um, we, we're look, very much looking forward to uh, having a great discussion with you all here today. So uh, with that, let's get to it. So first off, I just wanted to say on behalf of the New Orleans Military Maritime Academy, I would like to thank the World War II Museum and the Congressional Medal of Honor Society for allowing us the opportunity to speak to these esteemed guests. Before you gentlemen are cadets from the largest high school Marine Corps JROTC program in the country. We are located right here in New Orleans and are very thankful for this experience. For our first question, I would love for you guys to tell us a little about your life when you were these students age. <laughs> I'd like you to take the message with you. And that is that we just about 18 start realizing we owe so much to so many people. And we need people to join in this lockstep with them. Lockstep with us. Finding people willing to sacrifice so that those on their left and their right can go with them to service is a positive job creation that, we, that we're asking them to let us do. But in addition to that, they're saying honor. Honor is the ultimate. Thank you. Um. Buddy's a graduate from uh, West Point in 1966, and he had his medal in about that time in uh, Vietnam. Uh, Brett, Tommy, and I are all Navy SEALs. Uh, Brett being the youngest, Tommy being the oldest, but me the meanest. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's great to see you kids out here because... We need you, you know, we uh, we live in the greatest nation in the world and we're going through some trying times, but I love to see all of you here in uniform. And, and that tells me that you're thinking about joining the military. Well, the military was great for me. I uh, I don't even have a high school education and I uh, climbed through the ranks and uh, here today to thank the good Lord above that we're, we're here. Uh, I got my medal. For saving him, Tommy, in North Vietnam, and uh, 
and um, Brett got his on Roberts Hill, and uh, Buddy got were you you were in three core, four core? I mean, I core. I so, core and three. Yeah, okay. And so we were all over Vietnam. I mean, I was in all all uh, four cores over there. But uh, thank y'all for being here. Uh, one thing I want to tell you that even at my age, uh, I still set goals every day and you achieve that goal and you set another goal and I'm in my mid seventies now and I set, set goals even in my seventies or something, but you reach that goal, you set another goal in life and move forward with your life because only one person can ever stop you and that's yourself. So you can achieve anything that you want to achieve, but you got to do it. We can help you, teach you, but you got to be the one to do it. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for. Is on? Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hope you can hear me. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I want to thank all of you for your commitment to uh, to join one of the services. Um, not many people in this country uh, do that anymore, a very small percent, less than 1%, which is kind of uh, terrorizing to us because we were brought up um, respecting and loving this country, and particularly those who have fought for this country to keep us safe and give us the benefits and the, and the uh, advantages, <clears throat> excuse me, the advantages we have. Um, one thing I did want to pass to you is of the values uh, that have always helped me was uh, commitment. Um, <clears throat> committed to a goal, committed to a um, an objective, and, and not giving up uh, until that's achieved. And <clears throat> that's extremely, uh, was extremely important to me and helped me uh, make it through uh, my career. Um, Again, uh, there's a number of values that are that are uh, special. Sacrifice, of course, um, but uh, commitment was always one that uh, allowed me to achieve. And I, so, once I was committed to something, I wasn't going to quit until uh, that goal had been achieved. But um, we we are appreciative to be here. We. Uh, I, I, our gratitude for you for for what you're choosing to do and the services you hopefully you will you will uh, be part of and help keep this country. You're going to be our future. You're going to keep. You're going to be the ones that keep us free uh, in the future. So thank you all for that. So putting myself in in your shoes, I, I have a question for you. Just with a show of hands, how many of you right now? have been through or are dealing with difficult issues in your life. There's something inside you that you're just struggling with. And so it's the same place I was. Same place. Right? That that same feeling that you're having inside when I was, you know, 16, 17, 18, trying to make that decision, what do I do after school? Same issues, probably, right? Home life wasn't all that great. Really didn't didn't have any mentors in my life. Didn't know what the future hold in it. And frankly, some of it I wasn't even thinking through some of the the next steps there. When I get when I finally graduated from high school, you know, I was going to go to go to university, and I started thinking, well, hey, that's that just doesn't seem to be the right fit for me. And thankfully. Thankfully, I went and I listened to some inner spark inside me and I said, hey, I, I just need to go serve right now. I need a little bit of space to think, right? To think for myself, to see what what is real in my life, what grounds me. And I went to the Navy recruiter and a Navy recruiter signed me up. I said, hey, I want to go be a Navy SEAL. And I don't know how many of you know this, 80% of the people that go to SEAL training don't get through and they and that recruiter and if you since you don't get through seal training you're in the navy for like six years so that navy recruiter you know he was pretty happy he was like yeah I mean, this guy's never going to be a seal and he's going to get through and he's going to be in the navy for six years and thankfully i proved him all wrong um uh, but looking back 
Yep. In the same exact place. Right. You're not alone, right? We have more in common with each other th than you think. So the message I would tell you is no matter how bad it gets, how difficult things may seem, that little gray matter in our head, it can lie to you sometimes. But you got to keep the faith, keep moving forward, find a goal, keep moving towards it, trust each other. You're not alone. All right. So the next question will be for Lieutenant Norris. What were the, the most positive experiences you had while serving? <laughs> you know, uh, I enjoyed my life in the, in the military. Um, it changed for me. I, uh, I went into fly airplanes, went to fly A4s. I had a small depth perception problem, not as bad as the one I have now, but um, <laughs> wasn't able to finish that path. And thankfully, um, I was able to be a member of uh, the, the Navy's uh, underwater demolition SEAL teams. Um, probably one of the uh, the uh, most uh, rewarding experiences I got, I had, I think was serving with the with the members of that team and the camaraderie and the closeness, and it's almost like a family. Um, it is a family. Um, it's it's something that that you become a part of and you and you never leave and um, even after you're away from the teams you've left them um the team members you never forget who they are and you're always welcomed by the new ones and when i see members like like brit here who came along and uh um you know, i'd have loved to have served with him um yeah, that would have been great. I was Mike's officer in charge, um, uh, uh, uh. which in and of itself was uh, was unique because I'll tell you, when you go into combat, there's nobody else you want with you. When you come back home, Katie, bar the door because you're going to be standing in front of your CEO trying to explain why he did what he did. So <laughs> he's one tough son of a gun. But uh, it, but it's those memories and the, those that fellowship and that and uh, closeness that you have with the people you serve with um, that makes that that experience so much so so remarkable and so memorable. So I, if that answers your question, um, it is. It's it's a unique um, family to be part of. For all of you, uh, we'll start with um, Master Chief Slavinsky. When we look at the Medal of Honor Character Development Program, what core value do you gentlemen believe is most important and why? To me, it's courage to me. C courage, courage is the one trait that, that will guarantee everything else in your life. Courage has a, th th I see there's a few different layers to it. I think we can all readily identify with the physical courage piece. I think that, that comes easily enough. But there's certainly an emotional piece. There's emotional courage. There's moral courage, ethical courage, intellectual courage. There's social courage. All those things, when, if you go out and you look across our society, and you, maybe you turn the TV on and you see the news, you see where that has failed everywhere. Right? People have failed to have social courage. They failed to have intellectual courage. And then because they failed in those areas there, then then things get heated up. And then, you know, we start disrespecting each other. And then countries start disrespecting each other. And then next thing you know, we end up with some of the issues that we have going on in the country here now. So to me, courage is the one that grounds every other one. Would any of you gentlemen like to add on or pick yours? Or I think I've already done, uh, have, have, have gone through mine. I think it was commitment. Um, I think it's extremely important. It always was important uh, to me. Once you have a goal, um, obviously you have to have the courage to face that goal um, and, and, and courage to have the commitment to be able to achieve that goal. But it's the commitment to it and never giving up 
and um, having to face whatever obstacles you may encounter trying to achieve that goal. Uh, if you don't have the commitment to to reach that end, you you never will. Um, and once you've committed to something, be dedicated to it and and don't give up till you achieve it. Uh, you know, there's going to be obstacles in your way. Everybody has those. Everybody has downtimes, but you got to kind of work away or work your way around those. As long as you're committed to whatever the end goal is, um, you you can find a way to achieve that. And uh, thankfully, um, that that I think was was most important to me. Um, uh, let's see. I, I, I say sacrifice, uh, and, and, but courage all of them means something different to everybody else. And I use the word sacrifice. Uh, when I say I sacrifice, there's somebody more important than me. I'd give my life for any of these guys up here. I've never have been afraid to die. That was the last thing in my calls. If you're worried about dying, you're not going to be able to understand what living's all about. And we had some young people that I went to Vietnam with, I had to send home because they're always worried about what's going to happen to them. If you're not worried about sacrificing to save them, you've lost all understanding about what's going to keep you alive. And that's, 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 that's fighting the enemy. Because no matter how many times I've been wounded, I always got back into the fight because they're still going to come after me and Tommy and as Brett did and Buddy. So I, I say sacrifice. But when I say sacrifice, I'll give my life for any of these men up here, which they'd give their lives for. So when we went back to save somebody you know, or, or rescue somebody to receive the medal, I mean, when Tommy got shot in the head, I went back and, and we were we we're getting over six hundred NVA, and and uh, it was four of us, and uh, and uh, and then when I swam with Tommy, and, and another guy tied to my body, and I'd been wounded eight times, uh, you know, and everybody was worried about what we we're going to do. Well, kick, stroke, and glide, so I was going to sacrifice everything. To make sure I got Tommy and Quan out alive, and we're, with the grace of God, we're all alive today. But all the things like courage, you know, and Tommy, every one of those things means something special, something different. But put them all together, you'll have the perfect person. Thank you. Would you like to add on, um, Captain Bouquet? Yeah. You hear a lot of people bragging about what they did. You didn't hear that here. You didn't hear that here. If it's bravery that you want someone to be cognizant of, that will come to pass. You don't have to do it. You have to accomplish the mission. You've heard that time and time again, the mission, the mission, the mission. And then the obstacles to that mission. Start adding them up and you say, I can do this. I can do this and I can do this well. Don't tell me to stop. I'm going all the way. All we can do is encourage you to try. All we can do is to say, please, do not forget the smallest guy on that trip. Everybody has to fight the success of the mission. Very, very important. But you never, ever leave the littlest, least difficult, least at, behind. Look at that. It's a guy that will probably smile five to five to smile to let people know I'm all right. And his next words would be take care of Susie, take care of Johnny, take care of Joe, take care of them. I'll be all right. And if you go through this entire process that we're going through here, it's the ability to stand up and say, we can do it. We will do it. Here's how we do it. Hang on. Let's go. And it, 
over. It's over. You see the way those young kids turn the ladder on and say, let's go get them. It's amazing to me. So how big that heart is that must be involved in that particular person. They're going to succeed. We are the voice that says they succeeded. We know we won. We know we did better than all. And we continue to do so. And every time we look at one of you down there, it's 18, 14. Where's the 14 year old? Is there a 14 year old here? Probably not because you're not doing it. I think, but I think we're 16 and up, sir. 16 and up. <laughs> Where's the 16 year old? Raise it. Okay, you, you sneaked in under that drawer. <laughs> I want you to know that we have a place for you right now. All of us are there telling you, you can do it. The youngest of all, you can do it. When you burrow down and look and straighten your everything that you're looking at, you're going to see. That's, that's your life. That's your life. And what you have on either side of what you see in front of you is that they are there to help. They are there to carry when you do. So God bless you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be in your presence. Thank you for allowing us to be with you today. And do not quit. Prove all wrong who say the younger generation can't. Is this public radio or television? It is television. <laughs> we, don't, we don't say what I was going to say. <laughs> As my closing emphasis, <laughs> I want very much for each and every one of you to know that the mountain you're climbing now is not the largest mountain you'll climb, climb tomorrow. You have a privilege. Do not let them down. God bless you. So I think uh, all of us in this room, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I think all of us uh, in this room would love to know um, what you guys have been up to since you've been discharged from the military. How have your lives played out since you left the armed service? Yeah. And we can start with Lieutenant Thornton. I, I, I want to say something. Great. So I was in the second first that I know what I want to do with my life. And uh, my father knew me better than I did. And, uh, I, got, I, got just... I got in a lot of trouble. All right, guys. <laughs> so uh, I, uh -huh. I, I, got, I was in front of the uh, juvenile delinquent uh, judge, Judge Thomas, many times, he said. And I, I got in a big fight. And uh, yeah, he was there with me. And uh, so my decisions were made for me. And uh, he said, Mike, what, uh, what I was going to do, he said, I'm going to send you to reform school or I'm going to let you make your first major, major decision. And he said, do an about face. And of course, Vietnam was hot and heavy in 66 when Buddy got his medal. And I turned around and I said, I've always wanted to be a Navy uh, frog man. And I, that, nobody even knew what SEALs were back then. And he said, okay, go sign the papers right now. And I went over and signed the papers. Came to find out 15 years later that my father and Judge Thomas had set that whole thing up. And that way it made my decision to join the military. And uh, uh, so they, I've had a lot of decisions made for me, which my father was my biggest mentor at all times. And But he knew that I was a, a good soldier. I'd make a good soldier. I just needed somebody to uh, tighten it up. So uh, I went to, like I said, I don't have a high school education. Uh, uh, I went there and I became underwater demolition. What Tommy said, it was underwater demolition recruit training. We started off 129 guys and we graduated with 12 in my class. As Brits, said, more than 80%. And, uh, and they said, well, you're going to go to SEAL team. I said, I'm going to be a Navy frogman. I didn't even know what SEAL teams were. And after 25 plus years i found out what seal team is and uh it goes back to what buddy was saying about setting goals in your life and i've been setting goals ever since and um and uh 
you'll you'll go up that mountain and you'll see another mountain and you can climb that mountain as buddy was saying you can all climb that mountain i said the only person that's going to stop you is yourself people are here to help you and people will do what they can do for it you're going to have obstacles as tommy said you go under it get somebody to throw you over it go around it whatever you need to do don't let the obstacles start because we all have obstacles in our life and you will continue to have obstacles, uh, even in, it's in your in your mid seventies. And uh, but the thing is, I'm pushing that thing around there. I've had obstacles lately, which I don't like, but I'm still not going to quit. I'm going to continue doing. And uh, so, just remember, only one person can stop you, and that's yourself. Thank you. Master Chief Slavinsky, what have you been up to since you've been discharged from the military? Wow. Uh, let's see. I retired in 2014 after 25 years of service. And I found myself like I loved my job. Like I loved it. I loved being around essentially you. Much older versions of you, right? But <laughs> But you. Uh, my teammates, I love the work, something different every day. And then you retire and all that kind of goes away and you're left with, okay, who am I now? So it was another, another whole discovery period, right? You got a bit of a discovery period for yourself going on right now, right? Figuring out who you are, what do you believe in? What am I going to do with my life? Um, shouldn't put too much pressure on yourself because it'll figure out. Should military maybe is a good choice for you to help sort through that a little bit right um but i was got retired and just sort sorting my way through you know the next steps of my life and i got a call in uh 2018 from a high-ranking member of the u.s government pretty much as high as you could pretty get in the u.s government you can probably imagine who that is it's the president President calls and said, hey, you know that thing you did back in 2002? Well, this was 2018, so hey, why don't you come to the White House and receive this, this recognition? And there was a, another life-changing event, uh, taking, taking this recognition for, you know, for what was a, a pretty bad day and recognized for all of the teamwork that we all went through that day. Um, the loss, the struggle, the sacrifices um, you've heard. And now I just, I spend my time uh, just trying to live up to uh, all the sacrifices that have been given to me. All right. I think it's about time that we bring our student questions to the forefront. Who would like to go first? We have a microphone for you. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. I'm First Lieutenant Pierre, Cadet First Lieutenant Pierre from New Orleans Military and Maritime Academy. And I have a question for you all. Um, did your view of the world change differently after you served versus before you served? If so, how did it change and what changed? As, as Britt says, I I was very good at what I did in SEAL Team. And like I said, I didn't have an education and I was scared. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And it, as Brent said, it, it worked itself out. And uh, right now, uh, I have a big foundation. I'm, I'm, uh, you, you, like I say, you don't have to have a high school education or a college education to do stuff. But my wife and I have a foundation. I'm putting 19 kids through college right now. I'm paying for their whole education. And uh, Tommy and Britt know all about and, uh, my foundation. And uh, I gave out uh, almost a half a million dollars in money to take care of the problem. I don't want the money back. I just want you to take that money it, as soon as you get your problems taken care of, but I write the check to the problem. I don't give you the money. I'll take care of the problem. You need to take care of yourself. And as Britt said, get back on track. You know, we all have obstacles, even today. 
So that's what my wife and I do now. We travel 280 days a year. Uh, and, uh, but to give back to me, it was my father was my greatest mentor. He only had a sixth grade education. And uh, he said, you, you give back to the people that will come over. And it has. And, and you know, I don't have to ask for money anymore. People just give it to me. And I give it back to you guys to better your life, which I've been a very lucky so with the grace of God. So that's what my wife and I do now today. My service, you know, right when again, brought in your shoes, I was very singular focused. It was very, very much focused on, you know, me and getting through my initial objectives. And then, you know, it ha happens pretty quickly, but certainly you realize it, you know, midway through your career. And I look back on it now, realizing that it's, it's a very, this is a very plural thing that we're in. This is a human experience that we're all going through. And this is, we're all in it together whether it be United States military or any other government that we're working with or any other people that we're working with, I looked at things very much as we're all in this together. Any place we were going, we went to and worked with, we always looked at this, what's the problem and how do we solve the, the, the core problem the most efficiently? So I, I looked at the world, you know, I look at the world certainly with a lot of, you know, a lot of hope, um, a lot of respect, uh, both for the people we're working with and respect for our opponents um, who have maybe even an equal amount of conviction towards what they believe in that we do. And uh, at some level, you have to respect that. Um, so I approach problems uh, a, a little differently than I did earlier on in my year than my years than I did now, right? Ha having, a, having a great deal of, uh, like I say, respect and um a little more reason, I think, towards um, the world around us. Um, from my perspective, how we looked at how I looked at things prior to my military service, um, I looked at the world prior to that, uh, probably much like you do, other than the fact that today we're facing some unusual circumstances uh, because of some of the conflicts going on. It was more readily uh, uh, in your minds. Uh, during my time, um, I was more interested in school, getting through school, uh, going on to my career from then on. Um, and I had studied, um, was in the criminology field. I wanted to be an FBI agent. I got interrupted by a little thing called Vietnam and a draft, uh, which none of you have to worry about. But uh, then all of a sudden, I uh, I was able to be a portion, a part of a unique organization uh, in the military. It made me see things from a whole different perspective, and I see things in the world today, and I think all of us do because some of the because of, of what we've been through, we can pretty much see where we're going. It's scary, um, what how this uh, conflict um, could evolve, and um you look at you look at our country and you wonder you know are we are we ready for it um do we have the capability to handle what might evolve during this um a few other things that gave me some of the uh, a little bigger perspective was um after i after i was retired from the military and i was only able to serve eight years because i got wounded um, I, I became an FBI agent, which was not an easy thing to do because you know, I didn't meet any of the physical qualifications. I didn't let that stop me. I wrote a letter to the director of the FBI and, um, against all his advisors, he said, I'm going to give this kid a chance. I had an incredible career in the bureau. It opened my eyes <laughs> again to, uh, uh, the, uh, the issues are, you know, our country particularly the terrorist issues that we face. Um, so I see things in a whole different perspective um, than many people because they don't have those experiences. But I'll tell you, the military is going to give you a incredible background. It's going to put you way above your compatriots who, do, who don't serve. Um, 
and give you visions and give you um, uh, a background to understand where the world's going and how we can survive in it. Um, but uh, um, you know, it's it's. I only hope that uh, this, this these these issues can be resolved peace, peacefully and doesn't develop into something much larger than what we're facing right now. Um, yeah, because if it does, um, obviously it's it's gonna it's gonna fall on the shoulders of you folks. You're the newer generation. You're gonna have to handle a lot of what's gonna happen. Um, so, uh, you know, good luck to all of you. Um, you know, I hope we don't get into a situation where we are in a worldwide conflict. Um, war is not a neat thing. And, uh, um, but uh, um, I, I can only hope that, uh, you know, we're able to, to work through all these problems and solve them peacefully if possible. Um, and that uh, we continue to be a strong and um, steady nation that we are. Thank you. Please. Um, I was knew when I came in here, I was gonna look for a spot to say, hit a hammer, bring a hammer out, bang, remind everybody. You know more about a part of our society than all the people 20 and over could even imagine. And that's the problem we have, bringing all of America along. Not afraid to stand up and say, we need to help this person. But move aside, give me a hold. Let's see what we can do. All of that's necessary. And in particular, the thing that we need to do is something like 20% of our society has mental illness. You understand what that means, far more than many of us in protected office places might have ever know. But there are young men and women wanting to put that badge on who know they can win. Just give me the course to run. I believe in you. Each one of us believes in you. And we know if we can just make a few decisions go your way, you will have done it. You will have done it beyond anyone's wildest dreams. My brain goes. I'm I'm a full 100% absentee. My military career ended. I went to retirement, did all these different things, and when you kept up my swimming, I kept up everything that I do in life until something happened back here, went click. I couldn't even stand up. It's been going on for five years. But you, you know how to fix that. Because you did to get here. We need your help. We can't leave anyone behind in this challenge that we go forward on. So one guy with his friends, I'm asking you, stay hot, stay strong, stay focused. God bless you for being, for being here and God bless you for trying. I, I want to say something about my one-eyed friend over there, Tommy. <laughs> If he'd have listened to me, he'd still have his eye, but he didn't listen to me, so that's okay. <laughs> but he was one of the top under, undercover police officer, federal agents in, in the history of the FBI. He'd take that eyeball out, and his hair goes all wimpy and stuff, and and he said, come on, we're going out on a, a lift. Well, I, I thought, you know, I was going to look good like Don Johnson. Where's the Ferrari? He's in a Rambler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and uh, but he, he busted some of the biggest cases in the history of the FBI and working undercover. So, you know, like I say, he didn't let that stop him. As I'm telling all, we all go have problems. We all go have obstacles. We all have that. And if Buddy is what Buddy just said, 
this guy was the smartest guy. He's made more money than anybody I've ever known in my life. And uh, and his lovely wife and Britt, uh, Britt will be our next president of our society, but he's going to be the United States Senator up in Idaho because I want to make sure he does that. So, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you, but, my you know, but you me. keep setting those goals. Yeah. And you keep setting those goals and you never, you got to, as, as Buddy just said, you got to keep setting those goals and you got to move forward with your life, no matter how old you are or how old you get. And right now you're in the prime of your life. We all said we had problems. We didn't know where, where to go. Well, somebody showed me a way to go. And with the grace of God, I made it. And I, I kept on, but I kept setting those goals. As Buddy just thought. He had a little problem, but he's back on, he's setting back up, setting high and doing great things. So even though you get knocked down, you get back up. Everybody gets knocked down in life. How fast do you get back up? You don't lay there and cry in it. You get up and do something about it. And so I wish you all very, very best in life and set those goals and don't, don't worry about those obstacles. You'll, be, you'll figure those out too. You. We have time for at least one, maybe two questions. Um, good morning, gentlemen. I'm Cadet Staff Sergeant Watson from Noma. Um, and I was wondering, how did um, your experiences affect your parenting capabilities and as fathers? Well, I think it made me a better a better father. But at the time of my action in 2002, I had a, I had a six-year-old son at home. And I remember thinking, just, just as I'd made the decision to go to 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 do the action that I would be the award of the medal for, I had a moment I was thinking about him at home, thinking I'm never going to get to see him again, right? And he's not ever going to get to see me again, right? And is he going to be able to remember the sound of my voice or what my laughter sounded like or what, what would his birthdays be like? You know, all those emotional things. And then you, you park that away. You know, you allow yourself that luxury i guess in those difficult moments to think about those things and then you realize hey, that's not serving you at this point in time you need to knock it off and get focused <laughs> but i think when i get back home though right go, going back to your question you know the way i viewed the world and more importantly the way i viewed my relationships right which is what's more most most of a lot of our problems reside or come from right? we have poor relationships poor relationship with other countries poor relationships with your neighbors poor relationships with your friends or family and you either work on those relationships and they get better or you realize they're toxic and they're never going to get any better and you jettison them and you get rid of them and you just move on because that's your mission that you've chosen and you move on but i think it made me maybe a better father because i was more in the moment present with my son and with my family so i think it made me a better father and a, and a better leader I, the only thing i regret about the military is i have uh tommy's the the godfather of my my daughter and my son i miss 18 years of their life and i never can bring that back i miss some you know wrestling champions you know, doing gymnastics and all that stuff. And I could never bring it back. But as Brett just said, we're closing the gap as fast as we can. And my daughter's 54, my son's 52. But we're, we've spent a lot of quality time together now. And it's made our, us closer. And my my kids stuck by me. And I and, and now I, I, I'm at the ability that I can do things for them. And... Uh, so, uh, you know, but it's, it's, we traveled all the time, as, as Brett's saying. I mean, you, you leave in 18 years of marriage, I was gone uh, 15 and a half years, I think, in 18 years of marriage. And this woman comes up to the judge and says, I love this man, but this is not a marriage. <laughs> Through the calendars down there, he says, uh, Mrs. Thornton, you keep really good notes. And it wasn't a marriage for her. I mean, you, you, uh, and, 
it's really funny. Uh, I have the, the greatest wife in the world now. Uh, I, I can't go half the place in the United States without taking her with me. Uh, I'd have been married for 60 years, but God finally gave me one, my fourth wife. So there's somebody <laughs> out there who loves you. <laughs> Don't As Tommy up. said, I'm a trying man. Don't give up. Just keep <laughs> on going. <laughs> uh, what he's saying is that's the most important decision you'll ever make. Yeah, that, that's, that's what he's saying. The, the last one was, yeah. yeah. But, I don't... Uh, but, you know, it's been a great day here today. And thank you for uh, doing that. So it, that things, as Brett said, things will work its way out with the people we love and, and, and our kids and stuff like that. I was not fortunate enough to have any kids, uh, but I have a lot of grandkids, a lot of godchildren, <laughs> godchildren, uh, and I, I, what I, I, how I tried, I tra taught them the way I was brought up. Um, I tried to uh, impart a lot of the goals and values of them, um, but not to the point where it overrode uh, enjoying them, having fun with them. Um, you know, uh, parenting. Parenting is an is probably one of the most important things you'll ever have to do. Um, I had none of my own, so I had to do the best I could with my godchildren. Um, hopefully, I was successful. Uh, I love Mikey's kids, um, uh, but uh, um, I can't answer that question from actually being a true parent because I wasn't. Um, I just tried to be the best friend and uh, um, partner I could be with. They did a good job. Got children ahead. <laughs> small thing. Small thing I should do. Because you were reminding me and you taught me. Let's start saying thanks to the people who did the work to give us this opportunity. Let's find the wherewithal and the strength to say thank you. I know today I would not be here today if my wife were not here. She would not be here, and she came a long time after. But I faced things that I just never dreamed existed for someone at my age. Uh, that's what the old parts did have to pay, not me. She was there to uh, grab my hand, grab my hand, give me something to say, hang on to. It. Oh, that's not a sign of weakness. That's a sign of teamship. That's the funny thing. We talk about, did you get it done? Did you get it done? I mean, all of us get it done. So as we're sitting here getting ready to close the door on this chapter with you all, we just be able to say thank you. Thank you. And teach the young kids who are standing in line, get in there, step over and say, I got you. Do the same as you move forward. I Gotcha. Thank you. God bless you for all that you have done for all of us. Thank you for what you will do. All right. I think we have time for one more. We have a question from the virtual audience, and that is, what is the toughest obstacle you have overcome? I'm thinking... For me, it was probably uh, overcoming the disabilities that I had. Right. Um, yeah. You know, after <laughs> what, not ducking fast enough, I guess. You know, <laughs> I was I was shot on Halloween, uh, which was uh, yesterday was our fifty first anniversary. Yeah, me and Tommy. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, it was not a good day. It was a hell of a firefight. Um, uh, but uh, so, but. What that left me was, was, was again, a, a disability that disqualified me from doing things that uh, um, I would like to do, be part of. Um, and again, I worked around those. I was able to accomplish and do uh, what I wanted to do way back when I was going through school. I, would go, I became an FBI agent, um, had a wonderful career, but uh, um, that was that's probably the the toughest obstacle that I ever had to, that I had to deal with, but I didn't let it defeat me. And I hope it, uh, what you all take out of this is exactly that. You may have an issue, you may have a problem, 
uh, you may have a disability. You don't let you, don't don't think that's the end of things. I mean, you can you can work past all of that um, if you just got set your mind to it. Um, you all are our future, and uh, thankfully, um, sitting here looking at you all, I'm I'm quite proud and pleased that you are, because it looks like we're gonna have a great future because of you all. And God bless you all, and uh, thank you so much for allowing us to have a few minutes to impart to you some of our experiences. And God bless you all. Biggest challenges for me is something that I still face every day. It's probably similar to you, and it's it's me, it's my mind. You know, we I kind of started with this earlier, but you know that gray matter up there it has a way of talking you out of doing things you know you probably should be doing do you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. like you know i should probably hug my mom and my dad or your caretaker every day and look me in the eye and tell them hey i'm thankful for you right and i love you you know we should you know you're supposed to do that right something in you tells you oh, i'm not going to do it today because I, I can always do that tomorrow or later homework anybody got homework due right now Anybody putting it off? Don't, like, don't put, ask that question. <laughs> are you putting it off? You're putting it off, right? And it's gnawing at you, isn't it? Because you put it off, you should just you should just do it, do it, and get it behind you and get it over with, right? And it's those little things that just wear at you, right? As you get older in life, you know I should work out today. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stay in my covers in my bed. It's pretty warm. It's pretty comfy, right? I'm going to have an extra dessert, right? I'm going to have those treats, right? I'm going to take the easy road, you know, right? Because it's already affecting you, right? It's already that internal battle. That's the biggest challenge that I think you're going to you, you face every day. It's you. I don't think it's really someone else telling you you can't do it. You're not smart enough. You're not fast enough, right? You're not in the right club. I don't care about any of that, right? It's you, right? It's your internal battles. Better today than you were yesterday. So that's it's still a fight and it's always going to be a fight and you just going to make sure who's in charge in there, right? Who's in charge in there? Right? It's tough. Right? Set the conditions so that you are in charge. You're doing the things that you know you should do, that you want to do, so you can achieve the greatness that all of you have planned. All right, so let's provide a big round of applause for Captain Buka, Lieutenant Thornton, Lieutenant Norris, and Master Chief Slabinski for taking the time to speak with us today. It's uh, truly been an honor and a privilege for us to learn from your experiences and how they provide a roadmap to us to live by. Today, you showed us that the values in our hearts and minds can help us preserve despite any obstacle of how we can stand up to serve and help one another. Thank you, gentlemen, again. <laughs>